I love drinking sake, but do I know how to make sake? Find out as we put the sake I actually made to the test. Welcome to Kanpai Planet, I'm Mac, and in the summer of 2021, I spent one week making Japanese sake on Sado Island at Gakogura, a brewery school run by Obata Shuzo. On Kanpai Planet, you'll find videos of each day of my incredible experience, showcasing the sake making process at a level never before seen. We left that on day seven with the Tomezoe, the final edition of the Sandang Jikomi, the three-step process for building the Moromi Mash. The Moromi Nisu, our fermentation time, was 22 days before our Shibori, the filtration or pressing. Now it's time to taste the sake I made with my team, the Rising Dragons, which is something so special I didn't want to do it alone. So with me today is world-renowned sake professional, Chris Hughes. Hello, Mark. Chris has been promoting sake and educating sake enthusiasts for over 14 years. As well as sharing his knowledge, Chris is here to provide an independent take on how this sake turned out, lest the fact that I made it somehow interfere with my judgment. Chris, welcome to Kanpai Planet. Thank you so much for inviting me, Mac. I'm really excited to taste these sake. Fantastic. So let's dive in. All these sake are Junmai Daiginjo. Daiginjo refers to the fact that the rice used to make these has been polished down to 50% in this case, or less. Junmai means no jaws or brewer's alcohol has been added. All these sake are made with Koshi Tanre rice. Ooh. Is that one you know? It certainly is. They call that the thoroughbred of uh, Niigata Prefecture. Koshi Tanre is the child of two of the most common rice varieties, Yamada Nishiki and Gohyaku Mangoku. All these sake are muroka, which means they have not undergone charcoal fining. Charcoal is actually used to kind of remove any off colors or off flavors or aromas. Um, this practice actually dates back about 100 years. They, they used it uh, for sake, which was going to be entered into competitions because you want as clean a sake as possible. And then it kind of grew in popularity even more when the sort of style of sake in Niigata became popular, the uh, tande karakuchi or clean, dry style of sake. Mm. Um, because you, obviously you want to clean that up as much as possible. All ah, right, so you want a water white color. That's right. To be there. Yeah. And that's ironic because Niigata Prefecture is where Sado Island is. Now, in recent years, more and more breweries have stopped using roca, right? It makes the sake too perfect. The needs have changed yeah. of, of the consumer. Exactly. Well, yeah. actually, they don't have the facility to do uh, roca fining at Gakogura. So that's all fine with me. All three bottles are 14.5% ABV, which is at the lower end of the standard range that you find sake normally is yeah. at between kind of 14 to 17 percent yeah that is quite low yeah and yeah. normally it's been diluted down to that level That's but right. these are actually genshu undiluted oh. oh it's one of those lower alcohol genshu that are kind of trending at the moment so you know the idea is that Diluting sake with water also dilutes its flavor profile. So that's not necessarily a good thing. So what some brewers are actually doing now is they're trying to achieve this lower alcohol uh, level right. in the fermentation itself. So they don't actually have to dilute it later on. Well, that was something that uh, Obata-san wanted my team, the Rising Dragons, and the brewing staff to challenge themselves to do, to make a low alcohol Genshu Junmai Daiginjo. That's really impressive. I mean, that's not easy to do. And, it, and you know, trying to get the balance right in the fermentation is very, very difficult. You don't want to end up with a sake that's too sweet. Well, we're going to find out though, aren't we? <laughs> we don't know if it's been a success yet, but that's what we're going to find out. Let's find out. I'm excited. In front of us here, we have a pasteurized Junmai Daiginjo, an Arabashiri, and a Nigori. Each bottle costs 2,200 yen after tax which is about 20 US dollars. That's such a good price. Sake is too cheap. It is. We're gonna start off with the pasteurized Junmai Daiginjo. 1,726 of these were bottled. Of the three sake, this is the closest to something that would go on general sale. And I'm actually very proud to see that it is on general sale. This is Obata Shuzo's most recent catalog, and there it is. Wow. Most sake is pasteurized twice. 
but this one has only been pasteurized once before bottling and then cooled down post bottling with a good hosing down of cold water. Chris, the Nihon Shido, the Saka meter value on this Saka, in fact, all of the Saka is minus six. What conclusions do you draw from that? This is probably gonna be on the sweeter side. One concern I have is how, how sweet is it gonna be? You know, is that sweetness right. gonna kind of st stick around or will you manage to balance that with the acidity? Is it gonna be cloying or is it gonna be integrated? Well, let's find out. But first yeah. of all, let's check out the color. It's definitely not completely water white. Sort of like a, an olive oil hue. There's that lemon green element in it. There you go, yep. Very beautiful. Pop it down on the table and give it a little swirl. Push those aromas to the top of the glass. Let's check the nose. On the nose. Ooh. Very nice. That is nice. Yeah. Very pronounced ginjoka. I'm getting like a lot of apple, red apple and some elderflower. And uh, it's quite floral as well, white flowers. Yeah, really nice and elegant and pure. I'm not saying anything. I'm, I'm quite nervous, actually. <laughs> you know, I, I, I made this thing. So, um, I mean, uh, I'm waiting all... for the judgment of Paris here. I'm getting a lot of banana, yeah. uh, lychee, and strawberries as well. Definitely some strawberries in there, yeah. And you know, any sake where you're kind of spending this long on the nose and not even getting to the tasting part is, is good, a sign. It is, I keep going back to it. Wow. Should we taste? Kampai. 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 Mmm. Wow. Oh, it's, it's nowhere near as sweet as I expected. Uh, the acidity is definitely there and, and, and there is quite a nice balance. The nose was pretty pronounced. Yeah. The palate a little bit less so on those flavors. It's a much lower intensity. Right. But it works, you know, it, it's, it's a very elegant um, and it's quite expressive of how it's been made as well. It has this kind of typical Niigata style Tande karakuchi. There is some dryness there. Yeah. Part of that's going to come from that rice we use, koshi tanre. That's right. Which has been made specifically for that Niigata style. Yes. It's modest, but you still get the richness from its parent, you know, Yamana Nishiki in there as well. Like, it's very expressive of, you know, the rice that's been used and how it's been made. And um, I really, really, I really like that. That's impressive. An impressive, the first one in the lineup, and that really kind of sets the bar very high, in my opinion. It's definitely not cloying. That was no. our big fear. Looking big fear. at that headline, minus six, Nihon Shido, even on the nose, right? The ginger cow was so pronounced. I was wondering if that might lead to a lot of sweetness, actually, mm. on the palate. Yeah. But it's not. No, no. It's a very difficult style to make that low alcohol Genshu, right? Yeah, you've got to compensate a little bit for that lower alcohol. The finish is quite interesting because when you think of Niigata Sake, you think of that short, sharp kire finish. Yeah. And this doesn't have that so much. It doesn't have a kire, but it's still very clean. And actually, I like the fact that you get a little bit of that aroma and you get that lovely kind of fruity floral aroma lingering a little bit. You can enjoy it mm. a little bit longer. I like it. Yeah. Good start. A very good start. Yeah. Very impressed. Let's move on to the Arebashiri. One of 270 that were bottled. This is the free run liquid that emerges from a filter before pressure is applied. It tends to be livelier with more dissolved carbon dioxide. No, 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 no. Yeah. And you can see it has a pretty cloudy appearance. Some brewers release this as an unpasteurized, unmatured product but when they don't do that, they tend to blend it into cheaper blends, right? That's correct. It's very rough and ready and doesn't really stand on its own so well. Well, I know that you're not a fan of the I'm style. I'm not a fan of Arabashiri because it does tend to be quite grainy and rough and dry, really dry, but I'm keeping an open mind with this one, right? I, on the other hand, tend to love fresh Nama, Arabashiri, Nagori styles of sake. I love that uh, liveliness on the palate. So I'm actually really looking forward to this one. How would you characterize the color, Chris? Well, obviously it's not clear. First thing you notice is that you've got some very, very almost invisible grains of rice in there. Yeah, it's got this kind of inviting misty look to it, hasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty nice, hazy and off-white. Definitely off-white. On the nose. On the nose. Oh, wow. Straight away, that's straight off the bat yeah. there. Like, okay, this is one of those sake which is quite easy to describe the aroma profile. For me, I would sum that up as 
peach yogurt. Yeah, but yeah. not like a Muller fruit corner where the peach is on the side. Integrated beautifully, peach and the lactic yeah. together. And it's magnificent. It's very fresh and, and very expressive. You know, you can really pick out all these different uh, flavors. They're beautifully uh, executed, I think. It's great. Reminds me of some of those sake down in Okayama that are made with white peach yeast. Yeah. It's quite a dominant note, isn't it? <laughs> I can't wait to try it. He wants to go. All right, can't buy. <laughs> Sorry, can't buy. This, this smells so good. Mm. Oh, 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 umami, like cho it's chock full of umami, isn't it? That is Moorish. Yeah, it's so creamy, but it's got lots of this lovely umami as well. That is so good. And it's devastatingly good. I could destroy this bottle, I think, just from the first mouthful. I know that if this was put in front of me, yeah. beautifully chilled as it is now, yeah. It'd be gone very quickly. Completely agree. And I, I mean, yeah, I could drink this until the cows come home, right? No pun intending, because in has... the lactic elements of this. It's very soft and it's very well rounded. And I think sometimes, you know, Arabashiri can be a little bit too boisterous and rebellious. And this is kind of almost like a, a really well behaved <laughs> Arabashiri. I love this. That translation from nose to palate is something I look for, for example, when I'm reviewing a whiskey. And it's good to see it here. Well, we had a little bit of a disconnect with the Junmai Dai Gingjo That's right. uh, pasteurized. That's right. This one, really it's lovely progression. Seamless, I would say. Yeah, really intricate. You know, there's a lot interwoven uh, together in this sake, and I think it's done beautifully. You get a really strong bitterness with that abashiri a lot, and, and there's none of that, because you've got quite a lot of sweetness in there, right? Maybe that's, maybe that's the secret here. A bit unusual, but I really like it. I think it's fantastic. This might be the best abashiri I think I've ever had. I thought we set the bar quite high with the Junmai Daiginjo, but this raises that bar significantly. Oh, I'm so happy to hear you say that. Chris, we've switched from the wine glass to the Edo Kiriko glass or choco. What was your thinking behind that? Edo Kiriko is a beautiful, a beautiful glassware. This little flower pattern on the outside and you can just see the cloudy sake poking through. Almost has kind of a Christmassy feel to it, doesn't it? It, it does, uh, it really adds to the experience. It does. We're switching up the vessel is another dimension of this very, very deep experience that sake is. And it just makes it so much more fun. Also, I've found that having some of these cloudier sakas, be it in Arabashiri or in Nigori, in a wine glass, isn't quite the aesthetic experience that you might want from a drink. You end up with this kind of white ring or this white stain on the glass. It's a bit of a taboo in the industry, actually, to serve a cloudy sake in a wine glass. But I think if you're just enjoying it at home, who cares, you know? The finish, it's not cloying, but there is a lot of sweetness there, but it's also got a really refreshing characteristic. So yeah. it really, it just keeps you wanting to go back for more and more. It's extremely refreshing and very, you know, really, really tasty. I'm so happy to hear you say that. So, this was the one I was the most worried about with you because right. I know you're not a fan of the style overall. Right. I know we've drunk a lot together. It's, I, I tried to get you into it. Right. You've not been a fan. No, I haven't, but this has really won me over actually, yeah. I'm really impressed. And this, you know, I thought the Junmai Daiginjo was setting the bar very high, but this, this completely jumps over that. Fantastic. I'm really excited about the Nigori now. All right. On to the Nigori. On to the Nigori. Last but not least, it's the Nigori. Only 93 bottles of this were uh, bottled. Now, Nigori simply means cloudy. It's often mistranslated as unfiltered, which is not just a linguistic error, but could actually get you in trouble with the law because in order to be legally labeled as seshu or nihonshu, which are the legal designations yes. for sake in Japan, all sake needs to be filtered to some extent. That's right, Mac. If you don't filter the sake, it's actually something that's a bit like an igori, but it's called dobudoku. It's the ancestor of sake. So yes. There's no such thing as an unfiltered, completely non-filtered uh, nigori. We used a fune at okay. Gakogura. We pressed that sake. Yeah. That sake went into a storage tank. And as that storage tank is cooled, the sediment sinks to the bottom. Now, what's interesting is that tank had two taps. The bottom tap led to the nigori, and the top tap led to the pasteurized junmai daiginjo. Uh, that's how... Uh, other breweries might do it as well, yeah. But that's, that's a lot of hard work. Let's see if it was all worth it. Absolutely. Appearance again, off-white. 
but the big difference here is that you can see big grains. Lumps of rice. Grains here. of rice, like floating around in, in the sake, but it looks kind of cool. Oh, the nose is so different. Oh, completely. Like this is more rice. This is more kind of yeah. like rice pudding. Absolutely. Bad memories uh, from British school dinners <laughs> yeah, yeah, there yeah, with yeah, the rice, rice, pudding. rice we pudding. We mean the nice rice pudding, you yeah. know, that, that, that grandma we used to make. Oh, a very cereal, isn't it? Very like kind of molten, a lot of very yeah. strong kind of beer aromas. There's there. a lot of uh, grain in there, whether yeah. you're uh, getting beer, a little bit of whiskey. A bit of brown sugar. Yeah, a yeah. bit of cocktail. It's like a rum kind of aroma. Absolutely. Oh, I'm getting the whiskey now as well, now you mention it. Yeah, that is really malty cereal grain forward. Yeah. It's quite incredible. Reminds me a bit of an Amazaki. But I love this. It's like steamed rice when you go into a brewery. Kampai. 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 Oh, that's so different. It's not fruity. It's like, it's more kind of like cereal, like a malt, malty, like a, almost like a beer or, uh, taste to yeah. it. A lot of nigori can be too chalky and too dry. Yeah. There's some dryness here, but it's kind of, it's got an interesting journey, this one. Mm. Hits you sweet, mm. then you get that dryness, and then back, you know, close to the finish, mm. you're getting that sweetness again. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. This isn't my favorite out of the three, to be quite honest with you, but I still think this is a really, really impressive sake. Nigori is actually one of my favorite styles, and I feel it is vastly underrated. Yeah. You know, I didn't actually like Nigori at first. The first Nigori I had, I found it too sweet. And then I had Nigori, which was like really dry and bitter and very, you know, acidic. And I think, you know, in a way, I think brewers are actually finding their feet as well with Nigori. You know, there is actually a Nigori day now. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. The 5th of February. It was, so it was actually registered officially this year. I'm glad they released it, admittedly only 93 bottles mm. from the bottom of that tank. But it allows you to see a different dimension of what we produced. Absolutely, and this just showcases the diversity that sake has to offer as well. Just like taking bits of different parts of that process and kind of releasing them as their own separate products is really a great way of showcasing how diverse sake is and how much there is to discover. That's a really interesting way of putting it. It was the same results of the Moromi mash that went into that press. Yeah. Either we let gravity do the work for the Arabashiri or we started to apply some pressure and then let gravity do the work in the tank after cooling in order to draw out the nigori from the rest of that liquid. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. This is a really, you know, I'm really impressed. So Chris, we've tried all three of them now. What did you think? Well, I would just say that, you know, all three of these are thoroughly enjoyable and I'm really impressed. Fantastic. I'm so happy to hear that. I'm feeling this sense of pride swelling up, not just for myself, but on behalf of my team, the Rising Dragons as well. I'm sure they're all going to be very, very pleased to hear that. Dream team. They're all really enjoyable. I think, you know, there's the type of sake that anyone can enjoy. What's that sense I'm feeling? Oh, yes, it's of accomplishment. Yeah, of accomplishment, which you, which you should. You absolutely should. What was your favorite? Without a doubt, my favorite out of the three would be the Ara Bashiri. Mine too. I really loved that freshness combined yeah. with that umami and that incredible white peach aroma. That was unbelievable. Eagle-eyed viewers can spot that it is the one that is lower down compared to the other two. You can't stop once you actually start, you know, drinking it. To paraphrase Captain America, I could drink that all day. <laughs> Whatever image you have about sake, um, that completely you know, dispels those in one sip. You know, with something like the Junmai Daginjo, it's more about like careful analysis, appreciating that elegance and purity. With Cloudy Saki, it's just like, enjoy it. It's good to get that variation. And there is so much variation out there in sake. And you don't know what's gonna be good until you try it. You have to go out into this world and you have to explore. The exploration is part of that journey. It's part of that experience. I think sake is very unique in that respect. And once you enter this world, you just go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. You do. And then the next thing you know, you end up making this stuff. <laughs> yeah. What did you enjoy most about this uh, experience? What's your favorite part of the process? I love sake. As you know, I've taken a few sake qualifications and I have enjoyed really learning about it. But there's a massive difference between that textbook versus actually the hands-on experience and really understanding the way that the rice, the water, the yeast, the rice korgi all come together to make this incredible drink. And I've got to say, it has given me 
the most appreciation for every single drop. That's what I went away with the first time I actually got my hands um, dirty, you know, in brewing. You have a go once, you'll definitely come back and try it again. I did tell Torji Nakano near the end of the process that I wanted to be a Torji, and he actually said dozo to me. He said, go ahead, you can have my job, basically. Chris, thank you so much for joining me today on Kanpai Planet. Thank you so much, Mac, for giving me this opportunity to be the first person to taste this sake. I am really impressed with the job that you've done. Thank you. So that's a wrap, not just on this tasting, but on the entire Gakogura series. Thank you for joining me for each day of my adventures on Sado Island. It's been an incredible insight into the hard work that goes into making this incredible liquid. Stick around because there's much more to come on Kanpai Planet. And until then, can pie.